Welcome to the Online Success Journey Podcast, your opportunity to discover and learn from entrepreneurs like yourself. This is not your typical podcast, but a place where you can get the real story and find out how real people encounter speed bumps and detours, but journey through to find success. Now here's your host for the Online Success Journey Podcast, Patience. Hello everyone and welcome to Online Success Journey. This is episode 262. Today we have Kat Makadente, a founder of Mark Enterprises, branding expert, speaker, author, podcaster, and a business strategist who helps business increase authority branding exposure to the right clients so they can make more money. Hello, Kat. Hello, patients. How are you doing today? I am fine. Thank you. I know the clan here is anxious to hear your story. So let's get started with the basics. Can you tell my clan a little bit about your background, about what you did before you started your business? Yeah, yeah. Well, my business now, you know, I'm excited that I work with entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, wannapreneurs, people who want to start those businesses. And it's really exciting for me at this time when businesses are suffering. And really the backbone of our economy here in the United States, but also in England, also, you know, in, in, in most of the world today are those small businesses. You know, here in the United States, they're, they're around two thirds of our economy. And so I help them to increase their authority brand exposure, which just isn't about the logo and it's not just about the website and it's not just about the color scheme. It's about communicating the right message to the right clients so you can build your business. And, you know, I started this business, this current business, about three years ago, I had a public relations and ad agency. I was making well over six figures, but I was unfulfilled for years. Part of it was the type of companies and organizations I was working with. I was working with very large corporations, trade associations, and I just wasn't feeling that passion. But I also had built it in a way that I, quite honestly, I was stressed all the time. I had anxiety attacks. I was 60 pounds heavier. I was on a cocktail of prescription drugs. And I shut it down. I woke up one morning and I shut it down at peak revenue because I decided, listen, there's no guarantee that any of us are going to be here tomorrow, much less next week, much less when we're 65 years old, when we want to retire. And so I want to do for work and in my career, what makes me fulfilled, what moves me toward my vision while at the same time, empowering me to be the best husband I can be, the best father I can be. We have four children. And so I shut it down at at peak revenue. And so my current company is the third profitable business. Every business I form makes six figures in the first six months. I had a seven figure business. We're on our way there with this current business now. And I use the lessons that I've learned over 25 years in public relations, advertising and branding to help small businesses, entrepreneurs build their authority brand exposure to come up with that impact story, not the process, not what you do, not your job title, but what's the end impact your clients get from working with you and then put together a process to communicate that message to your ideal clients. What a background, (laughs) Carl. Thank you. What is the most dangerous belief an entrepreneur can have? Yeah, I I, I think lack and limitation. And so there are those, those limiting beliefs. Um, You know, and I think every entrepreneur has a, a sense of, especially when you're first starting out, you think in terms of your competition. Oh, they might have more experience than me. Oh, I've never done this before. Oh, I have imposter syndrome. Oh, I can never charge that much. And what I urge people to think about is that you are an authority. You see, every business starts out as a thought, right? I don't care what it is. Look around you. You know, I'm looking around here in my room right now. I see a phone. I see a computer. I see a table. All of those things started out as a thought. Someone had it in their mind. Those thoughts turned into ideas. The business, your business, if you want to form a business, is the manifestation of those ideas. And within those ideas lies your authority. And what I mean by that is the purpose of a business is to improve the lives of someone else. Whether you're you know, producing golf balls, widgets, or high-end consulting programs, right? you are somehow improving the life of someone else. Your ideas for how you do that, that's your authority because you could line up 10 competitors all have similar product, similar service. But the way you deliver that service, the way you you provide that service in a way that is going to uniquely and specifically impact your customer or your client is different for you versus your competitor. So within your ideas for how you improve 
the lives of your clients lies your authority. And when you have that mindset, when you realize that, you realize that it's not just about being good enough, but you are the authority for how you serve your client. And it helps wash away those feelings of lack and limitation that I'm not worthy, that I, I'm charging too much, that no one wants to work with me. Because that type of mindset will get you stuck in the mud. And, you know, a lot of people invest in mindset and that's important. And they read self-help books and they watch YouTube videos and all that. And that's important. But mindset without process, you know, there's, you can, you can have a great mindset, have a smile on your face, but be stuck in quicksand. If you don't have a process to get out of that quicksand, you're going to have a smile while you suffocate yourself, right? So you got to add mindset. You got to add process to mindset so that you keep going every day. And every day, you know what you're focused on, you move toward it. And that process is what I teach for people to help get there. Thank you for sharing. But Kat, most of the ideas are taken, the tables, the phones, the iron, everything. Can we come up with some new inventions? Yeah, and it's not just about inventions. You know, it, a, a lot of people get frustrated thinking, I have to invent something entirely new. But really what you can do is you can take an existing product or service and it's the way that which you provide it and provide that service to your client. Uh, Victor Antonio, who's a international you know, keynoter on sales and everything, when I talked to him, he said, listen, all your products could be the same. Let's face it, a lot of products are the same. The X factor when it comes to branding and sales is you. So what's the difference between car salesman Jane, who's selling a car, and car salesman John? It's not the car. They may be selling the same car. It's how they serve me, the client. It's how they communicate to me. And a lot of people go into business and they want to tell. They want to pitch. They use that word pitch. And I hate that word pitch. I was in public relations and advertising for years. Everyone uses the word pitch. I hate it. Why? Because you know what? I do a lot of public speaking. I speak on stage. I can electrify a room. I can engage an audience. But when it comes to branding and sales... My ability to speak well is actually perhaps my biggest weakness. Why? Because your two ears perhaps might be your biggest branding and sales weapon. So what does that have to do with ideas? Well, when you sit down with a potential client, most people like to sell. Hey, I have this car to sell and I'm going to tell you all about the tires. I'm going to sell you about the electric. But salesperson Jane might sit down with that potential client and say, when it comes to a car, what are you most looking for? What are your, have big, your biggest challenges with buying a car before? You actually sit and you listen to the customer. You listen to their needs. You listen to their wants. You listen to their goals. You listen to their challenges. Then you can communicate your ideas and how you can serve and meet those unique needs and challenges. So I don't care if you're selling a table that's already been invented before. I don't care if you're competing with someone else who's selling the same exact product. You listen to that client's needs and wants. You communicate your ideas in a unique way. That's where it lies. It's not in the product or service that's unique. Yeah, you could be a Steve Jobs and invent a, invent a phone. But guess what? Here's what Steve Jobs knew. He was competing with Nokia at the time. He was competing with Microsoft at the time. And he came up on stage. He launched the Think Different campaign. And he said, the way that we are going to bring the Apple band back isn't to talk about our bells, our whistles, our features, our products, our megahertz. It's not to talk about how better we are than Microsoft. It's to build something deeper. And he launched a vision statement. People with passion can change the world for the better. So you see, it wasn't even about inventing the new products. At the time he launched this, at the time he made this speech, they had the same products, similar products to Microsoft. And they were suffering. Apple was suffering until Steve brought them back. But he knew it wasn't just the product. It wasn't your bells. It wasn't your features. It was that connection that you make with your clients. And it's communicating that deep and unique impact the client gets from using your product. It isn't the product itself. That's powerful. You mentioned earlier that you started your third business because you are really not happy. You right. packed up a few pounds. But really, why do you do what you do? The reason I do what I do is, is for my family. And, you know, uh, our journey has been such that not only did I shut down that business and start a new one, um, it's been the best thing I've ever done. It's been the biggest challenge I've, done, I've ever had, but it's also been the most fun I've ever had. And none of it matters if I can't be the epic husband and the epic father that I deserve to be, that they deserve from me. And so a lot of people seek work-life balance, and I can't stand that term. 
um, because I think it's a myth because there's not work and life. There's just life. And there's three facets of life. Yeah, there's work, but there's also relationships and your self-care. And when people think of balance, they try to balance it. And so it's like a teeter-totter or a seesaw, you know, or a scale where you balance it out by, well, I'm going to put it all into work for this next week, for the next five years until I'm 65. And I'm going to ignore my relationships and self-care. But then when I'm 65 or maybe in 10 years or whatever it is, then I'll put it into relationships with self-care and then it'll all balance out. Well, what happens is while we're busy putting it all into work, we're ignoring two of the most important facets of our life, our relationships and our self-care. And there's no guarantee that tomorrow is going to be here, that next week is going to be here, that 65 years old is going to be here. So the key isn't balance, it's alignment. It's aligning those three in a way that works for you. And so right now I'm, a, I'm in alignment. We actually last month, so not only did I, did I do that three years ago in which I shut down my agency, a month ago, we sold our home and just about everything we own and we packed it up. We took a 4,000 square foot house, consolidated it into a minivan, and we're just traveling right now. And uh, right now we're in the mountains of, uh, of uh, Georgia. We're going to be in Tennessee. Then we're going back to the beach in December next year. We don't know where we're going to go. We're just having fun as a family. I'm able to serve my clients. I'm on a podcast with you today. I have a client call after this. I have a boot camp uh, at noon today. And then this afternoon, we're probably going to go hiking. Uh, yesterday, I worked in the morning, three new business proposals, served my clients. And last uh, yesterday afternoon, I was with my family out on a lake. And so I call it that freedom lifestyle. And, and the freedom lifestyle is different for everyone. It doesn't mean you have to quit your job. You can live the freedom lifestyle and work for a corporation in a nine to five job as long as you have a clear vision for your life. You're really doing what you love. You're doing something that fulfills you. Your life is in alignment. You have those clear outcomes and, and you know where you're going every day. And so, you know, the, that freedom lifestyle can be, and, and I work with entrepreneurs who want to build their freedom business that can empower the freedom lifestyle. Well, how do you build, how do you fuel that freedom business? I think it's with an authority brand that allows you to efficiently and effectively communicate the right message to the right clients so that you have enough revenue to build that freedom business. Wow. Who came up with the idea? Let's sell the whole house and move into the van with kids and just travel around. Was it your idea or your wife? <laughs> um, you know what? It, it was It was kind of both of us. O over the last couple of years, we've been traveling. Um, you know, in December, our last overseas trip, we spent uh, a week. We went out to London just to see the, the you know, all the Christmas lights and, and do Winter Wonderland in Hyde Park. And, you know, we did all that, that those fun things. And Last May, we spent three weeks in Italy. The, week, the year before, we were, in, uh, we were in the UK, France, Italy, and traveling around. And so we got the travel bug, but also realized that we can go on the road for six, month, six weeks at a time and, and be fine. And so coming into this year, our plan was maybe to sell our home or start renting it out in 2021 and start traveling uh, the world. We were talking about Australia, Asia, those types of things. And then the pandemic hit. So that, that kind of went on the back burner. And so we're like, okay, well, the, the borders are closed. But, you know, you remember when the pandemic, when this whole thing started, we're like, well, things will be open in a month. You know, things will be open in two months. And the longer it kept going on and on, we're like, what? And, and then, you know, some of the unrest started here uh, in terms of there were peaceful protests, but then there were protests that weren't so peaceful. And it came into our town in Charleston and those types of things. We're like, you know what? The world happens, right? Nature happens. And there's things we can control and there's things we can't control. And we decided, listen, life is short and we're not going to wait around. If they're not going to open the borders, we're going to travel within the United States. And then if they open the borders, we're going to go. But we're going to create our sense of freedom. So I think it was we were both there in terms of the decision. But really, in about mid-June, we're like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. Because we homeschool our kids. Things were shut down. We couldn't do things, you know, and I know people who have their kids in school are going through that now. And we're like, we're not going to be a victim of lockdowns and shutdowns and restrictions. We're just going to go and build the life we want, regardless of the things. We're not going to focus on the things we can't control. We're going to control what we can and live our life that way. Let's put man aside because you have, you have done your other business before and now this is your third business. How did you know you were successful? 
<clears throat> well, I, my definition of success has certainly changed. You know, it used to be based on dollars and cents, but the more money I made, it didn't make me any happier. In fact, I felt more pressure and anxiety, right? Um, I was always afraid. The more money I made, I was always afraid I was going to lose it or that I didn't have enough. You know, we were, we were in, my wife and I were engaged. Uh, we got engaged in 2001 in the fake Grand Canal at the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas. And, you know, we vowed, you know what, we're going to go to the real Grand Canal and reenact this in a year or two. It took us 17 years until I finally shut down my agency. I mean, I was making seven figures. We clearly had enough money to go and travel. But when your definition of success is only around money, is only around material goods, then you never have enough of that stuff, right? And um, it was only when I broke that pattern and I said, listen, life and fulfillment isn't about material goods. I'm not saying material goods aren't, aren't important, right? But it's the value that you place on material goods. And if your life purpose, if meaning in your life is around those material goods, guess what? Something like COVID happens and your material goods, your meaning can be taken away. And so my definition of success now is living a life of meaning, whatever that means to you. And if meaning is only material goods, I urge you to think it through, right? Because you can lose your home, you can lose your car, but what if you lost your kid? What if you lost your life? You know, patients, you went through some things earlier in your life that really put meaning and perspective to you. I interviewed on my podcast several years ago, he was in my book, uh, Elaine Kapatashungo, who grew up in the Congo. And he was in uh, actually living in, uh, his family worked at the embassy in Rwanda. And they had to go through that when the genocide started. He was a survivor of that. And they lived on the, they lived basic on the road. I mean, they lived in, they were in hiding for years. I think it was five years and they fled to the Congo and ended up coming here. He's got a different definition, certainly of meaning in his life than someone who has just applied meaning to the type of car you drive you know, and the type of house you have. And I'm not saying if you have those things, I'm not saying that's not important. You know, I like my stuff, but I don't define myself by that stuff. You know, in the Bible, there's a, a, a um, there's a, a line that is very much uh, misquoted. And the full line is the love of money is the root of all evil. But a lot of people just say money is the root of all evil. No, if you look at it, it's the love of money is the root of all evil. Money itself isn't evil. But when you become obsessed with it, when you ignore your relationships, your self-care, the people around you, when you attach meaning to money, that's when it becomes evil because that's when you start to wither on the vine and become a slave of the money instead of someone who is really in control of your life, has deep meaning. Money can be a side effect of that. <laughs> but um, but that, that's really where my definition of success comes in, in in terms of living that life of meaning. What have you learned from business as a whole? Yeah, I, I think that um, it goes back to that, that my definition of a business is, and it's really branding and sales too, is improving the lives of someone else. And that's different than, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I'm starting a business, but they have that lack mindset that, you know, maybe they don't believe in their authority. And so a business to them is going and begging people for money for a product or service that they wouldn't otherwise buy. <laughs> right. And, and if you go through it that way, oh my gosh, you're always going to be stuck in quicksand. You're always going to be doubting yourself. It's going to be hard to move forward. But when you wake up every morning and you ask yourself how, no matter what your business is, no matter what your product or service is, how can I improve the life of someone else? Then that's exciting. You know, when, when I, when I get up, I teach a process that has you generating leads, but also making calls every day. I make 10, at least 10 outreach calls every day to prospective clients. And sometimes I don't feel like doing that, right? But I wake up in the morning and I know that I can't help other people unless they become my clients. And so I wake up and say, how can I help other people? Well, in one way is I can call them on the phone and talk with them and have a conversation with them. Now I call 10 people, maybe none of them are going to jump in. Maybe they'll jump in in a year. Maybe they'll jump in today. Maybe they'll jump in in a week. But I can't help them unless I outreach to them and have that conversation. And if they jump in, I can help them more. And I can't help my family unless I'm bringing in clients and have a, a business that has enough revenue to allow us to live our freedom lifestyle. 
And all of that goes into, I can't help myself and self-care as well. So really, you know, business comes down to helping other people and making a positive impact. And there's a word influence. And when you build true influence, that's when you're helping other people. And a lot of people think of influencer. Oh, well, influencer means they have a lot of followers on social media. Or they think of the word influence in terms of, uh, you know, kind of pushing, right? At that I have influence over someone and thereby I can force them to do something they wouldn't normally do. Well, okay, you can look at influence that way, but true organic lasting influence comes when you make a positive impact on other people. And instead of pushing them, you pull them in, you attract them in. That's when it's stronger because you're having a positive impact on them. And they look and they say, I want to be, I want to be near patients. I want to be near Kurt because they're going to make my life better. That truly, when you have that mindset and when you're building your business, Oh man, it, it, it's so much easier. It's so much more enjoyable and it's so much more effective because you're focused on the clients instead of you just pitching your stuff. What are the biggest mistakes have you seen in branding for the last 25 years of your experience? Yeah, I, I think, I think we're, we're at a point where, um, there's so many new shiny new objects that, and there's people who sell shiny new objects that uh, business owners who don't know better spend a lot of money on tools before they've built a strong branding foundation. So you go on LinkedIn, for instance, and the minute you start a business, you're going to get hit with people selling lead generation tools, email scraping tools. Hey, we're going to help you get more video views on LinkedIn. We're going to help you get more likes and clicks and shares. Hey, I'm going to design your logo. And so the entrepreneurs invest in those tools and they think that, well, that's the easy button. I can just invest. I call those people who sell those things the vanity vendors, right? We can get you a lot of likes and views and shares and clicks and color schemes and all that. And it's going to look wonderful. And these business owners invest all this money in it. And then they don't get clients and they wonder why. Well, guess what? I tried to take my likes and views and shares to the bank and deposit them. And they wouldn't take them because it's not just about the vanity. All that stuff is great. But, you know, Ernest Hemingway wonderful novelist. The quality of his novels wasn't determined by the type of typewriter he used. Typewriter is just a tool. Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, a podcast, videos, all that stuff, likes, shares, logo scheme, website. Those are all just tools. But if you don't build that strong brand foundation. And so I got to take business owners and entrepreneurs and strip it all down and say, listen, that's fine. You're doing all pay-per-click campaigns. You're doing ad campaigns. But who's your ideal client? Well, I don't know. What's your impact story? Well, I don't know. Well, then why are you spending money on those tools? It's garbage in, garbage out. If you're communicating the wrong message to the wrong client, then no amount of money is going to help you do that. So you got to break it down and build that foundation. What's your impact story? That one sentence that clearly communicates the positive impact your clients get from working with you. And it's not the what you do. It's not how you do it. It's not the process. It's that end impact. I have a client who runs a book company keeping company. And you would think, well, his impact story has to do with he'll do his, your finances and he'll do your books and he'll help you with accounting. No, we determine his ideal client. He works with family owned businesses. You know what his, his impact story is? He saves marriages. Now, why? Because there's a, a husband and a wife own a business. One of the spouses kind of runs the business as a sales. Maybe the other spouse is in charge of keeping the books. That keeping the books and managing the money is the source of the biggest and maybe only arguments between the spouses, right? Because the, it comes to the books and you miss something and oh my gosh, and it's meant. But well, my client goes in and he saves marriages. So you go really to that end impact, which isn't what you do. It's not how you do it. It's that end impact that your client gets from working with you. If you don't know that, then no amount of pay-per-click Google ads, Twitter views, whatever video views are going to matter. So you got to build that and, and really identify your ideal client. Then and only then do you start looking at the process to communicate the message to the ideal client. It is something that, you know, heck, I have a coach, right? To remind me of that all the time. But I would say the vast majority of businesses, you know, I, you know, I work with a lot of uh, financial advisors and people in solopreneurs. They're very good at what they do. They're, they're very good at the service they provide, but they're not marketers. They're not branders. They're not salespeople, naturally. 
what they have to do is condition themselves to become that. Because if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, guess what? Like it or not, you are a salesperson. <laughs> you know, you are a brander. Um, because, you know, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to, to see it, did it really happen? And guess what? If you could have the best product in the world, you could have the best ideas in the world. But if your ideal clients aren't hearing it or seeing it or knowing about it, then it doesn't matter. What is one piece of advice you can give to our listeners right now? Like what is happening? How to build their authority plan? Yeah, it's it's put yourself in the driver's seat. You know, this year I've well, every day I talk to people who whose business, for instance, might have been eighty or ninety percent referral based, and that was great until COVID hit, and now the referrals have dried up, or in some cases. You know, you can't control when referrals come in. And so in an in a uncertain economy, it gets scary, right? Yeah, my referrals have come in, in the last couple of months, but I really don't know. What if it dries up? What if my referral source goes out of business or retires? Um, and then there's other people who just throw their hands up and say, well, I don't know. There's a pandemic. It's a business, bad business cycle. Nothing I can do. That's a victim mentality. You got to put yourself in the driver's seat. And you put yourself in a driver's seat by building that strong foundation I talked about and then putting together a process that every day allows you to communicate that message to your clients. I teach my clients how to get on the phone. We get down to scripts and get on the phone. Now, for a lot of people, for a lot of entrepreneurs, that's outside their current comfort zone. Too bad. You got to do it because the phone, a lot of people don't respond to messages. They don't respond to emails. You pick up the phone. Guess what? That's part of branding. You leave a voicemail. On someone, you leave a couple voicemails on someone's machine. They're hearing your name. They're hearing your impact story. They're hearing what you're about, right? They may or may not call you back, but then they may see your content in a month. They may hear your, see your, hear your podcast next week. And so you start putting out that content that makes an impact on them. You try to communicate with them directly. You build this surround sound strategy around your ideal clients. And next thing you know, you're in the driver's seat because every day, you're communicating that message to those clients. And you know what? When you have that process and you are focused on that process, it doesn't matter what's happening in the world around you. I don't care. I, I, I you know what? I, I do everything virtual. I don't do any networking events. I don't have to. I work with a lot of uh, financial advisors who have said, well, what do I do? Everything I did was networking. I can't meet with people over the phone. All right, well, let's put yourself in the driver's seat now. How are we going to do this? And how are we going to make this happen virtually? And if you've never done it before, well, too bad. Do you want your business to survive or not? Put yourself in the driver's seat. Build a branding and sales process that puts you in the driver's seat, that makes you bulletproof to what's going on in the world. Oh, you touched a little bit about you said you have coaches to keep an eye on you uh, in your businesses. What is the most valuable thing your coaches or mentors and your advisors has told you? Yeah, I, I, I mean, one is, is, you know, I think the value of a coach is that when we're in the forest and we're chopping down trees, you know, we're focused on chopping down trees and a coach can be a person that hovers above the forest saying, whoa, 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 wait, why are you chopping down those two trees? The trees you need to chop down are behind you. But when you're in the forest chopping down trees, you, you can't really see it, right? And so that, that's valuable from a coach. I think a big thing my coach helps me with is to, in many ways, get over myself, <laughs> you know, um, and realize, you know, are you really communicating that impact to your clients? Or are you just, are you telling your clients what you think they need to hear? The other piece is, is they help me become detached. And it, it, detachment is very important because there are going to be days, there are going to be weeks where... It, it, that, that aren't as fruitful in terms of, say, closing deals as other weeks. You got to stay focused on the process because if you only judge the success of your day by how many deals you close that day, your mindset is going to take a beating because it just isn't going to happen every single day. So you focus on that process and you judge yourself on that process. You know, I judge myself on process each day. Did I make my 10 calls? Yes. Did I put out my content for the day? Yes. Did I, you know, and it's all going to come out in the wash. Now, if I go two months and I work on my process and I'm not closing deals, then I have to really look and say, right, what's working and what's not working. I'm not calling the right people. I'm not communicating. But a lot of people, they, they, they start a process 
after five days, it's not working. They declare defeat and then they stop the process. Right. And it, you, you just got to keep at it. Things come in seasons, things go in seasons. Uh, as my coach tells me some week, you're the foot and some you're the ball. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, any team, any athlete goes through a slump. Do they just quit and give up? And, you know, if you're a footballer and all of a sudden you haven't scored in three games, you just give up. No, you go back to the process that got you where you are and you focus on that. And you see that with any footballer, they, everyone, even the best footballers in the world go through slumps, but you keep at it. You go back to that process. You follow that process and it gets you back on track. What is one thing that no one knows about you? Interesting. One thing that no one knows about me. Um, I'm pretty much an open book. Uh, you know, the funny thing, the, the, the one thing that comes to mind is, um, uh, well, one is, you know, I'm terrified of heights. I mean, I, I mean, terrified to the point of sometimes paralysis. Uh, you know, I, I, there's some bridges I'll drive over and I almost feel like, uh, like in the past I've had to have my wife talk me through it. I, I mean, it's like, uh, I'll start sweating and feeling like the car is going to uncontrollably go right off the bridge. Like, and, and it goes back to my father and it's something I work on. And so we're here in the mountains and I've actually been working on it and, and we're going climbing and I, I've started small. We're going up, we're going on these bridges. We're going to do a zip line. And, it, and it's, it's that process to help, you know, the subtitle of my book was escape your comfort zone of misery. And a lot of people talk about getting out of your comfort zone, but really what it is, is it's really expanding your comfort zone. Cause say I, I'm afraid of heights. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to escape my comfort zone, but if I do a little climb today and a little higher climb tomorrow and an even higher climb the day after that, I'm not escaping my comfort zone as much as I'm expanding it. And, um, so I think that's a, a good lesson for everyone. But yeah, the, the heights thing, I am, that's my number one fear. We actually went on a roller coaster this weekend, which was huge for me. And you know what? I survived and I, I expanded my comfort zone a little bit. <laughs> Are you sure? That you're like, oh, yeah. let's finish this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my son was like, go faster. And I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> Wow, that's great. What grounds you? Um, meditation um, and also certain reading. Uh, I read every day the Tao Te Ching, uh, Lao Tzu, uh, the ancient Asian Chinese text. And it's really wonderful for helping ground. And, and, and when you read it and you actually compare, for instance, uh, other sacred texts like the gospel or even the Gita in, in India, it, it really is about getting in the flow of life. And Lao Tzu writes a lot about water. And we've been visiting a lot of waterfalls here. And I, I try to teach my kids that, you know, go to, you go to these waterfalls and there's these huge giant boulders and rocks, but they've all been formed by the water. Now it took time. But when water comes up on an obstacle, like a big boulder, it either goes around it, it goes over it. And if it can't, it just knows over time, it's going to win. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flatten out that rock. And if we're more like water and get into the flow of life rather than trying to really grind away and trying to force things, I think not only will it be more fulfilling, things will come easier to you. And it's not about living a life of ease. I think a lot of people focus on the grind and they get up and it's just about hard work. You can work hard while working smart. You know, when you go to a waterfall, that water's going fast. It's going hard. It's working hard, but it's going from the high point to the low point. And a lot of times we're so focused on swimming upstream that if we just got in the flow, things would actually be more successful for us. So those are lessons I take every morning I read the Tao. And it's really a, a time of where I get in the quiet and it, and it reminds me that, you know, the, the things that go on each day, um, the world is still going to spin <laughs> no matter what happens with the little, the little small little, little traumas we have each day. Uh, and if I can rem remind myself to be like water, uh, I'm going to be less stressed. I'm going to be more healthy. 
I'm going to be happier. I'm going to be more fulfilled and I'm going to be a better dad, a better husband, and I'm going to be a better business person as well. Let's talk about your business. Tell us more about it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I work with entrepreneurs and solopreneurs and business owners to help them build their authority, brand exposure, expand it to the right clients so that they can generate the right leads and more revenue. We even get in with a lot of our clients to help them scale their business. And, you know, a lot of that is focusing on the ideal clients and charging what you're worth. So you can have less clients, but more revenue. So that gives you more time to live your life. That's wonderful. And, um, you know, I work with my clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I also have quarterly boot camps that we go through. And it really helps them get through that process. And, you know, especially with my one-on-one -on -one clients, there's a lot of mindset involved in that because I teach the process. But it takes a strong mindset and a process-driven mindset to focus on that process every single day. Um, Jim Collins uh, wrote a series of books, uh, Good to Great, Great by Choice. And, you know, he analyzed all these top companies in the world. And in Great by Choice, he talks about, he tells a story of two explorers. One was uh, Roald Amundsen and the other was Robert Falcon Scott. And in 1910, these two explorers were competing to be the first known humans to set foot in the South Pole. So obviously you can imagine it's a horrible trek, right? Freezing cold in the tundra and the Arctic. And the two men left at the same time with their teams. Now, Robert Falcon Scott said, listen, when the weather is horrible and horrendous, even if that's a couple days, we're going to rest and conserve our energy. But then when it's good, we're going to go 30, 40, 50 miles that day when the weather's nice and we're going to get our mind set up. Amundsen's team said, we're going to do something different. No matter what the weather is, no matter how good it is, no matter how bad it is, we're going to go 20 miles each and every day. And he had team members who said, but it's sunny today. Let's go 25. He said, no, we're going to go 20. They just went 20 miles every day. Now, a lot of us think, well, Robert Falcon Scott's is great. You can serve your energy when times are bad. And then when you go, you really go when, when, the, when the weather's good, when times are tough, then you go hard. Well, Robert Falcon Scott got to the halfway point only to find that Amundsen, who did his 20-mile march each and every day, beat him by 34 days. Not only that, on the return trip, Robert Falcon Scott and his entire team froze to death and died. And so the lesson there is when you focus on that process, no matter how sunny or snowy the day is, when you focus on that process each and every day, when you do your 20-mile march, you get ahead. You're going to win by 34 days. <laughs> But you're also not going to die. You're going to live. And so with my clients, I help them put together that 20-mile march. I had a client yesterday or, or a potential client say, well, do you just teach a process. It's going to take me, you know, five hours a day to do because I also have to serve my clients. And I told them, well, I don't know. You be the judge. After this call, I'm going on the lake with my family. He requested a proposal. That was three new business proposals I sent out that day. Most of us don't have five hours to focus on branding and sales. So the process I teach my clients, could you do it in a half hour? Yes. Could you do it in an hour? Yes. If you want to take four hours, have at it. But it's a process that if you do it every single day, you're going to get the right leads from the right clients to build the revenue for your business based around ideal clients, growth clients, clients you like working with, clients you love providing impact, and clients who value you as a trusted advisor. So that's what I do with my clients. Where can we find your business and how can we connect with you? Yeah, so uh, here, here's a real easy way to do it. Now, I, I think you have to be in the United States, so I'll give you two. If you're in the United States listening to this, right, or if you have a cell phone that can, that can do this, text the word Uthority, Y-O-U, Thority, to 55678. Or go to Merck, M-E-R-C, dot Enterprises. That's my website. You can find more information about me. You can schedule a free strategy call. You can also subscribe to my uh, podcast, which is the Authority Brand Podcast, and uh, and we can connect there. Why is, why is only in America? Because now this is a virtuous. Surely you can teach someone like from you. Yeah, I don't know. If you, uh, I guess if you tried it, if you text, I'm not sure how the texting works, which is why I say that. Uh, can't you? Can't we email? You can. E yeah. Well, <laughs> certainly. Yeah, you can email me at. Um, at uh, Kurt, C-U-R-T, at Merck, M-E-R-C, dot enterprises as well. Um, yeah, I just didn't know if the text thing works. You texting authority to 55678. I don't know if you have to put, if that works, if you don't have the country code and all that. Um, so yeah, a number of ways you, you can find me. 
Thank you for sharing. So, Klan, there will be more from Kat in a moment. If you are listening on one of the many podcasting platforms rather than my website and you are encouraged by Kat's journey, go to onlinesuccessjourney.com for a bonus portion of the interview. Online Success Journey is a wonderful membership built for people searching for the path to success. We are one big clan and you can be part of this community for free. Once you have joined the clan, click on part two of Kat's journey or over 200 plus other journeys that are available and learn how you can find the right path for your own online success journey. That's a wrap clan. Remember, success is a journey. Patience and care. This is not the end of the journey. We hope you've enjoyed listening to part one and want to be sure you know there is a second part to this and every journey podcast at onlinesuccessjourney.com filled with even more success tips, uplifting stories, and even a bit of fun. There are dozens of episodes only available to the members of the Online Success Journey clan. Check out the website and click on Join the Clan for more information. Patience would like to thank you for listening to this podcast, and she has a free audio gift for you at her website. Go to OnlineSuccessJourney.com for instant access to this gift. Of course, you know that listening to the journeys of others helps each of us chart our own path, so make sure you're subscribed to be notified as each new interview is posted. There are so many ways to stay connected to the online success journey and to listen in. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we appreciate your help in telling others. One of the best ways to share the benefit you get is to rate and review it at Stitcher and other sites by clicking the stars or completing the ratings form. By clicking the thumbs up and leaving a comment on YouTube or liking and sharing the podcast on social media. To review the podcast within iTunes, simply open iTunes to the podcast, click on Ratings and Reviews, then write a review. On behalf of Patience and until next time, thanks once more for listening. It is our hope that this podcast will guide you on your own online success journey.